So hey, this mini course is about composting in Blender. And basically, that's a quick way to fix and improve your renders. In part one of this mini course, I talked a bit about how to prepare your scenes for compositing inside Blender. And now we're ready to get to the fun part. So let's dive in and throw in a lot of notes and see how far we can push this render. So to start composting inside Blender, I would suggest you open a clean Blender file. This is much better than the file with all the 3D stuff in because a clean Blender file is much quicker to do the compositing in. So here we are inside Blender Compositor and let's start out by adding an image. Let's locate the one that we just rendered out and duplicate the node and add the background as well. So now we've got our two render layers in here so we can do the compositing. If you are rendering out image sequences for an animation, all you need to do is just change this value to image sequence. Then you can save the amount of frames in the animation. So let's just talk about the word compositing. And compositing actually means to put together different images. It could be live action footage. In our case, it's just two 3D rendered images. Later on, we will go into post-processing and in the end, color grading. But it's important to understand the difference between these things. So let's start by adding an alpha over, which will allow us to put the background behind the car. So this work as we intended. And now if we want to do something like if you want to add a bit more glossiness to the car, you can do that by adding a mix node and then setting the blending to add, blocking our car into the top one and our glossy into the lower input. So let's take a look at these first and see what we might want to increase on our render. So I'm thinking that this orange light here is really cool. We could maybe also do that with some kind of a uh, color boost. But let's just try to do it with the cryptomats this time. So let's load in a cryptomat node, plug in the object, go to pick, and then let's pick this part down here. So if we go to mat, then we can see we have a mask for this plastic part. So let's plug the mat into the add node and see what happens. Here you can see how we're adding just a little bit of extra reflection on only this part. We have a bit of a little bit of noise here, so I guess we can also denoise this if we want to with the denoise node and then just plug this into the add to get a cleaner result. Okay, this is great. But what if we would like to add a bit more atmosphere to the render? Usually this is very good if you have big environments, but even for a scene like this, we can still add it. And also I'll just add it just to show you how I would usually go around adding the mist pass. So let's grab the mist pass from here and put it into a color ramp. So this works all fine, but the problem is we also have a mist pass for the background. So now we need to combine these two mist passes together. So the way to do that is to use a math node where you pick greater than, and then you put the background into the top, uh, top input and the foreground into the lower input. This way you will get this mask. Then you need a mix node and you just plug the result into the factor and the mist pass from the foreground into the lower input and the mist pass from the background into the upper input. Now, if we plug this into our color ramp, then we can see that when we're just the slider, then we will start to get this mist effect even happening on the car. So now we just got a little bit of mist here on the spoiler and then on the background. So let's try to plug this into an add node and see what happens. So as you can see, the effect is quite subtle, but it does add a little bit of extra depth to the image. This effect was something I used a lot for this render where I wanted the background to not be in focus. And the way to do this, instead of just blurring it with depth of field, because depth of field wouldn't make so much sense in a big scene like this. Then I used a lot of mist and you can see how the trees back here are almost gray. That was just to also add some depth so you could kind of see that some trees are behind and some trees are in front. But for a studio scene like this, it doesn't make so much sense. But still, let's just add it in there. Now you know how to do it. If you want to get fancy, you can also color the white to a kind of bluish color if you want to, if you want your environment to be kind of bluish. And this way you can also add some kind of tint or mood to your scene. So this is like a quick before and after, very subtle effect. So maybe some people are using the screen mode instead of the add mode when doing stuff like this. I would suggest that you stick to add because add is just exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's adding two values together. As far as I know, screen is like a compensation for when you want to add nonlinear footage together. It becomes very technical very quickly when you dive into it. But if you have two sRGB images and you want to mix them together, usually you would use screen because add would blow it out completely. But because we're using a good linear workflow, then the add is actually the best method of adding things together instead of using the screen. So here we can also check if we want to use some of the other passes that we rendered out. Let's see if we can use the AO pass for something. The way I usually use the AO pass is with the multiply and then a curve put 
onto the AO pass. So let's boost this one. So we have like very bright highlights and darker shadows. And again, if we want to, we can try to denoise it just in case we'll get rid of that yeah, noise in there, in the wheel. Let's see what this does. If it, if it looks nice, I would keep it. And if it doesn't, I would just, mm, I would just get rid of it. Okay, so now we're running into a problem because our ambient inclusion pass actually has a black background and we don't want this ambient inclusion pass to have any effect on the background. So what we need to do is to get the alpha from this image here. So let's find the separate sRGB A node and plug the beauty into the image and get the alpha here and plug that into the factor in the multiply. Okay, so now you can see that, that if we mute this one, then it's only affecting the car. Right now it doesn't look so nice. So let's try to control it a bit with our curves and maybe a math node. Let's just try to use this math node to brighten our entire ambient occlusion map up a little bit. Let's see what this does. So what you can see is that it just adds a little bit of punch to the image. The reason why it does that is just because the ambient occlusion takes the darker areas and darkens them a little bit and takes the surfaces facing upwards and just brightening them a little bit. I still think the effect is too strong. So let's take the factor and just add a multiply node on that one. Saying that we're gonna multiply it by, if we multiply it by zero, we will disable the effect entirely. And if we multiply by 0 0.5, then we will take 50% of the effect into the final. Let's compare and see if we like the result or not. Yeah, so I think this is good because, because it adds a bit more highlight on the wheels, but it doesn't make the dark areas completely black. So we started out with this and we ended up having this. Okay, so this is our compositing done. Now we need to work on the post effects. So this is where the real fun begins. So first of all, let's try to add some glare to the render. So let's search for the glare node and we can just put it on the main layer here to get it all over the car, but I don't think we'll do that right now. But let's take the emitter and plug it right into the image here and see what result we get. Okay, so we have a very small thing here. So let's try to boost this, maybe set it to high. This way we'll get more definition. It will like catch the smaller pixels. Put the threshold down. Okay, now we're starting to get something. Okay, so it looks like we need to boost this because, because of the camera angle, we don't have a lot of this emission. In the original render, I had a bigger part because the camera was orientated a bit differently. So I'll just boost this with a curve and see if we'll get a bit more. Yeah, that was the kind of glow I was looking for. Okay, so let's just add a, another add node and remember to use the add, not the screen because we're working with the linear workflow. And let's see what we get. Very, very subtle effect. You know what, let's just add a blur node to blur this a bit more and get a bit more fake bloom on top. Put it to fast Gaussian to make it a bit quicker. Yeah, something like that. Let's add another layer. Put just the normal glare in here. Maybe put this down to 0 0.5. So this effect is very subtle, but it's just, it's just to get like a hint of that really warm glow back here. I would, I would like to go back and adjust the camera a bit. We could do that later and maybe make a new version. And because everything is based on these layers and we didn't use any custom masks, then we could just rotate the camera a little bit and everything would still work. So let's try to see what happens if we just add a, another fog glow on the entire car. We probably have to set this threshold pretty high. Yeah, so we get a little bit of glare here. Maybe it's a bit too much. So the higher you increase this one, um, the less glare you'll get. I am kind of expecting that this one here will keep burning out because it's so bright. But you know what? Let's try to do this one. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit of glare in this one. And I think I'll actually do a custom mask for this. So let's just add a box mask and then pull this back a little bit. Make it smaller. Just put it on top of this guy here. So this is something we could not do if we were to do an animation of this, then we would have to animate the mask at least. We could do that, but it's very time consuming. So usually you would try to avoid that. So now let's take the mask and add a mix note and change it to multiply. Now we have this mask and the mask is just a black and white image. Right here, it's not completely white. The reason for that is that we're actually using the filmic color space. But as we are working in linear, this is still white. We just see it as gray. So. It's kind of technical, but just trust me, it will it will work. <laughs> so here we go. That is the, the thing we want to have. And then the glare, set this one to one. 
then we will only have the glare. That's perfect. Okay, so let's try to do the same setup. Oh, and by the way, if you press Shift Control D, then it will duplicate with the connections. And then let's just invert the mask. And this way we can get all the rest of the uh, of the highlights. So let's pull this one down to like 50. And I think we're still picking up a bit of reflection there and we don't want that in this one. So let's pull this one. I think it's this one, which is up. Yep, that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay, great. So now let's add in these two glares. So let's use the add and just add it here. And add the other one here. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, okay. So that's just a little bit of extra punch in there. And especially here, I feel like it's it's adding a lot of realism to this one. We could go ahead and also use the streaks to get a bit of like a lens flare in there, but I don't think I'll do it for this one. So now let's try to go ahead and make a bit of vignetting on this car. I will link to this notepad that I'm using for almost all my renders in the description. So you can go ahead and download it yourself. I will load in the Unshop mask and the vignette. I will also load in another one, which is called noise. Okay, great. So let's add the vignette. And usually like this vignette node group, it also has a brighten in the middle. So this brighten, you can turn it a bit down if you don't want to brighten it as much because you can also wash it out a bit. Yeah, maybe increase the spread a little bit and set this to 0 0.515. And the opacity, I'd like to put that a bit down because I don't want the corners to be black. I feel like if you, if you notice the vignette, it's too much. But if it just gives a bit of an extra focus in the middle of the screen, it's it's nice. So let's try something like this. Okay, something like that looks good to me. You know what, I think I will actually get almost rid of this brightness. Okay, so another note I love is the Unshop mask. And this might be something which is better to do in Photoshop afterwards. But I really like this note because it's, it's just cool with a little bit of sharpening. With the Unshop Marks node, we're running into a problem up here. And I think it has to do with the glow. If we are to just take a look at this picture in the image viewer, maybe we can find out why this is happening. Okay, so if we check these pixels, you can see how the value of these pixels, it's very, very high. And it was the same problem we had back here, where we had to set the threshold to 300. Otherwise, everything will just be one big glare. So to fix this, let's do a little workaround. So let's take a separate, RGBA because what we want to do is to take this result here and then just clamp it to maybe a value of 10 because we don't need this to be 300 because we are done with using the glare. So the way to do that or a way I found to do that is to use a separate RGB and then combine RGB and just plug this one in here. Now we need a map value node. And what this does is to take the minimum and maximum and then mapping the values in between those two. So let's add this one in for the red, for the green and for the blue. That's perfect. Now we are clamping everything to one. This is a problem because we're using Filmic. We are working with the linear workflow. And these values here, if we just clamp them to one, it will look very weird. And if it were to work in sRGB space, then this would not have been a problem. But we're using Filmic, which is a better color space. So it's getting kind of technical. But the thing is just, we need more than zero to one space, but we don't need zero to 300. And we won't be able to see a difference. So if we start to push this one up, if you select all the nodes and then press, for instance, five, hold the Alt key and then press Enter, then it will update for all three of them. So if we push this one to five, we can see that we get the details back in here. But if we go to the Unshop Mask node, then we will now notice that we don't have these weird black edges. But let's try to push this a bit further to see if that will reveal more detail. And you can see there's actually more detail in here. So let's try to push this one to 20 and see if there is still more detail that we are missing out on. And no, now we're starting to get these weird artifacts. I know this is kind of a workaround, but sometimes it can be very useful to know these kind of tricks if you're running into similar problems. But just know that the reason why this is happening is because we're using a sharpening node and sharpening can cause problems like this. But if we are to just turn this on and off, you can see why sharpening is just a nice note to use, especially here in the front, you can maybe see you can see some of these scratches much better with the with the shopping. Okay, so now let's add a quick lens distortion node. So what you can do is add a little bit of dispersion, just to add this kind of color offset in the edges of the of the image. It can look really nice, but it can also be a bit too much if you go overboard. So just pick a very low value. What I also like to do is set the distortion to minus 0 0.02, which will just bend the middle of the image backwards a little bit, and this will sharpen it up. 
Because the thing is, when you're using the dispersion, and if we use this by itself, then it would also blur the entire image because it's kind of like stretching the edges. And then when you are balancing it with a negative distort, then it will distort back the image and then you'll end up having a sharp image again. So another thing I'll do is just swap this unsharp mask to be on the other side of all these nodes. And actually I think I'll put the vignette at the end too. So let's go with something like this. One last thing I will throw in there is a bit of noise. So this was also a group that I added into this scene. So the reason why I'm adding in a bit of noise in the end is because if you take a photo with a real camera, you'll never have a completely noise-free image. So that's what we're just trying to emulate with this noise node. When we're trying to hit photorealism, what we want to emulate is the look of a real camera. So I was just fiddling with the size to find a size of the noise that I like, and then I'll put this to a very low value because we don't want it to be obvious. We just want it to kind of fill in these black areas. So there's something there. You can kind of see it in the background here too, and it, it just blends things together. In a, in a nice way. So with all that stuff added, I think this image is almost ready. So the last thing I will do is to do some color grading. And most people will probably do this with notes and that is probably also the right way to do it, but I kind of like to do it with the color management instead. Maybe some people are screaming at me right now, but please, please bear with me. But this is just the approach that I use and I find it very easy and useful. So for this one, I will just bring up the scopes from the image viewer. And you can see that it's kind of like scattered all over the place and that's perfect. The, the bending thing you can see in the middle is the background. So that we don't care about. We only care about the car. So, but first of all, let's try to add a bit more contrast and see if, if we like that or if that kind of just, yeah, I think it's just ruining all our dark parts. So let's, let's try, you know what, maybe, maybe we don't need to do so much to the contrast. Let's try to boost the exposure a little bit to see if, if getting it a bit brighter would, would look nicer. I think maybe a bit of brightness and if we take the gamma and pull that a little bit maybe and we can also use the curves to add a bit of blue to the to the dark tones and let's pull these up a little bit I'm not totally convinced. But if you like the effect, you can try to use it. Remember, when you're doing stuff like this, it's a creative process. So sometimes you'll end up clicking a lot of buttons and then figuring out that that was not the way to go. Then the only thing to do is just go back, keep up the good mood, and then work from where you got to. So, and also I think I would like to change the blue color a little bit. So let's add a hue correct and go to the hue. And let's try to color the blue to more of a teal color. Maybe like that. I did a similar thing for the artwork because I wanted it to be a bit more green instead of blue. These tweaks are very easy to do in Comb. You can also go back and do it in 3D, but it's more time consuming and sometimes you just want to, to make the change quickly. So I guess that was kind of it for this tutorial. If we were to compare the initial with the final, you can see how the final has, has a bit more of this cinematic look and has a bit more of a cool effect compared to the original, which was a bit more CG looking and a bit more flat looking. So that was it for this course. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a lot. If you'd like to support me and get the source files for this project, you can grab them on my Gumroad. Also, check out my Instagram where I'm uploading random stuff from my upcoming projects whenever I feel like it. Well, nothing more to say. Daniel's out. Have a good day, people.